everyone. Welcome back to another week of the Bulletproof Hygiene Podcast. We are excited to have you here with us today. I am extremely excited about today. You are in for a real treat because I get to introduce you to a fabulous hygienist who's been a big time mentor to me in my career. This is Barbara Tritz joining us today. Um, and this podcast is titled nutritious hygiene. And I have been wanting to do a podcast on nutrition for a long time, but I, I have to be honest and say, I don't know all the things I I'm honestly, I don't think we all know all the things quite yet. It's such a learning process, but I feel like there's no one better to talk about this than Barbara. And I just want to give her a quick little uh, blurb. She was a mentor to me. I kind of stumbled across her um, back in about 2016. She has a fabulous um, blog that you've got to check out. It's titled Queen of Dental Hygiene. Um, And I had just kind of started digging and reading some of her articles and I saw that she used a microscope and I was like, whoa, that is next level. That makes so much sense to me. I want to do that. And I reached out to her and she was so fabulous. She, we had multiple phone conversations. Um, she sent me videos, emailed back and forth, checked in on me. And she really helped me get set up with using a microscope in my practice. And it really changed the trajectory of my career and my passion for hygiene. So I am super, super excited to Im- introduce you to her today. And I want to give you just a little bit of background. So um, Barbara has definitely carved some pathways to healing and she uses non-surgical approaches to periodontal therapy. She's been doing this for more than three decades. Um, She is a compassionate and skilled practitioner. She has emerged as a preeminent expert in the use of microscopy technology, salivary diagnostics, air polishers, lasers, and perioscopy for evaluating, diagnosing, and treating oral disease and systemic connectivity. Her life-saving approach to clinical care has been the impetus for numerous awards and invitations to speak across the world. And in 2019, she received the Hugh Freedy ADHA Master Clinician Award. That is a big deal. She is a two-time recipient of the Orcos Award from PerioProtect, as you guys know, I'm a big, big fan of, Um, along with contributing incredible insight and powerful messages of holistic healing. She is a prolific writer, having offered more than 100 articles on her blog, queenofdentalhygiene.net. Check it out. It is so informative and you it's it's a wellspring. So um, Barbara, thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to have you. Well, thank you for the invitation, Krista. I am I am honored to be with you and your listeners today. So I hope I can impart my pearls of dental wisdom. Um, yes. I, I, I want to see dental hygiene change from a scrape and polish and pumice pushing to the real healers that we really are because we have magic in our hands, and but we have to know how to use it. Correct. And, Now, Barbara, I know you practice biologic dentistry, and I'm not sure all of our listeners know what that means. Will you tell us a little bit about what that means and and how you came into that? So that is a great question. Until five or six years ago, I didn't even know that biological dentistry and dental hygiene existed. I, I was using the microscope. I've used the microscope since 1985. I was using ozone, but I wasn't I wasn't getting the healing I wanted. And I left the practice I was in because they wanted me to shorten my time frame and do less and still, you know, pump the patients out. And I was like, I can't work like this. So I stumbled into a biological dental office. And, and what that is, it's, it's a game changer. It is looking at the root causes of dental disease. And, you know, for, for so long, we've been focused on, you've got to get the plaque off. You've got to get the calculus off. That's the, that's the real issues. Our patients are lazy. They're not doing their homework. They're, 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 no, they're not listening to us. And they're only coming in twice a year. And, and what biological dentistry does is it, it looks further and looks at root causes. You know, is it airway? Is it nutrition? Is it gut health? Is it systemic health? You know, prehistoric man didn't have tooth decay and gum disease like we have it at epidemic levels now. He didn't. He had room for 32 beautiful, healthy teeth. So what are we doing wrong? 
You know, he didn't have a hygienist running after him, telling him to floss, to tell him to brush. And it's like, okay, what, what can we do better? And that's where biological dentistry really shines. You know, where we look at, you know, opening up the airway, we look at proper swallowing, proper chewing, nutrition, like you talked about. Nutrition is huge. Our standard American diet is aptly called SAD. It is the SAD diet. It, it just, it does not promote healing. And because of that, and we'll get into that, you know, it, it is the periodontal disease and tooth decay are actually just the canary in the coal mine. It's the reflection of our poor systemic health. So, so I'm, I'm ready to dive into all of that, but does that, does that help make it yes. clear what I do? Okay. Yes, for sure. And I, and I think, and my hope is, and I know yours is as well, that this is really where dentistry and hygiene head across the country, across the world is looking at root cause and really fixing all of that together because that it, you know, we can treat symptoms all day long, but if we're not addressing the root cause, we're not really solving the problem. Exactly. So, and when we think about nutrition in the realm of oral health, you know, whether it be for the purpose of supporting wellness or healing disease, it can really get overwhelming because there's so many things out there. There's so much information out there mm -hmm. and, you know, patients balk at us checking their blood pressure to, to say the least, you know, that's kind of the easiest, most basic thing we can do. And it can feel really dicey to wade into discussing their diet and food choices. And I know you have traversed these waters well and have been able to establish some really great nutrition education and conversations with your patient. And we are here to learn from you and bask in your genius, honestly. Um, and on that note, um, I just want to say I had taken a one of the online courses you did on Alzheimer, the connection between Alzheimer's disease oh, and right. oral systemic. And you made just an offhand comment that wasn't even about what we were talking about. It was just like an offhand thing that you said that made me go, wait, what? Okay. I got to get, I got to get her on to hear about this because okay. I don't know about this. And you were talking about how your patients that are deficient in vitamin A are more prone to decay. So I was like, okay, I got to know more about this and I can't just keep it to myself. I have to have her on. Okay. So will you please share with us all that you know about nutrition and what we need to know to partner with our patients on their journey to health? Okay. All right. This is one of my favorite topics. Um, so tooth decay really starts in the gut, okay? It is not a fluoride deficiency. We are not deficient in fluoride. We have plenty of fluoride in our toothpaste, in our water, in the foods that are prepared with fluoride water. It's, it, that's not the issue. And putting more fluoride on is not going to solve the problem. And I have my own biases against fluoride because it does, it, it does it's a neurotoxin. And it affects IQ, it affects bone density, it affects teeth health. Um, fluorosis is a sign of fluoride toxicity. So we could go into that more. Um, I have a blog post on that. So, and, and oral hygiene is part of the problem, but it's not the whole problem. So when we have food that we eat and has glyphosate in it, and it has antibiotics in it and chemicals that you can't pronounce, all of our processed foods, they affect the gut lining. And the gut becomes what we call leaky, leaky gut or gut dysbiosis. And so with that gut dysbiosis, now we're getting food particles into our system. We're getting dead bacteria into our system and we are triggering an autoimmune reaction. So, so we've got a systemic health issue. We're not absorbing our nutrients. And when you don't absorb your nutrients, then you have, then you have lack of nutrients in your whole body. And when tooth decay is a lack of fat soluble vitamins, the fat soluble vitamins feed the odontoblast. We learned about odontoblast in dental hygiene school, and then we promptly forgot about them as soon as we walked out the door, never to be thought of again, but odontoblast are our warrior cells within the tooth. They heal the tooth, they make secondary dentin, they, they kill the bacteria that comes down the tooth tubules from the mouth and, and they, they heal the tooth. So if we don't have fat soluble vitamins, we cannot feed the odontoblast. Now, 
without the odontoblasts, now we've got the acids and the bacteria from the mouth coming down the tooth tubules. And there's nobody there to heal them and kill them. And that's where tooth decay comes from. And we need fat to, to dissolve those fat soluble vitamins. So our low fat diets are inadequate to feed the odontoblast because we can't, we can't dissolve and, and use those fat soluble vitamins. So vitamin A, vitamin D3, vitamin K2 and vitamin E. And so that's the real source, the root source of tooth decay. And if you read the dental diet, by Dr. Stephen Lynn. Yes, I mean, that should yes. be that should be everybody's Bible. There's so much good information in there. Yes, and, yes. and and all of my low, my low, like my high cavity patients are all low in vitamin D. When I have somebody, especially a kiddo that has like two or more new cavities, I send them to their primary care doctor to get blood work. And all of them have had vitamin D levels in the teens and low 20s. So working with your primary care doctor is really important. You know, we cannot work on this alone. You know, you can drill and drill and drill, but you're going to get recurrent decay. You know, the best predictor of future decay is current decay. So if we don't fix the root of the problem, and that is raising that vitamin D level, I want it to be between 60 and 80 nano, nanograms per milliliter, I think is the, is the uh, unit. Um, but on the blood work, it'll say like 30, you know, and the, and the doctor's like, oh yeah, 30 is great. That's, that's normal. Well, it might be normal, but it's not a healthy level. I want to see it between 60 and 80 on that blood work. And we got to work on getting it up. And, you know, it's, so that's, that's, where we, where we really need to go with tooth decay. It is not a lack of brushing. It's not too much sugar. Sugar stops the dental tooth tubule flow. That's what sugar does. So that's where sugar does its dirty work. Yes, it feeds the bacteria, but if our saliva, if our pH is at seven, we're not gonna have an acidic mouth and it's gonna have a different microbiome. But when the pH goes below 5.5, then we've got minerals flowing out of the teeth. So, so that's where mouth breathing comes in. Well, and that, that was going to be one of my questions to you is what, what would you say is, as I was preparing for this, I thought, what is, you know, what's the most important nutrient that we need? And, you know, arguably you, I hope you agree with me on this. It's oxygen is number yeah. one. None of yeah. us are going to make it another minute without the oxygen. So yeah. I kind of wanted exactly. to start on that hierarchy of, of, of the oxygen aspect. Yes, we, we are not breathing properly. About 50% of the population is breathing through their mouth. You know, uh, if I walk through the grocery store, even, you know, pre-COVID, um, I would see people walking around. And I just want to go, I just want to close their lips. Like, do you mind if I just touch you? Like, you know, I, I'm a hygienist. I, 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 I can do this. But uh, it's, you know, we've got to teach people to use their nose. And, and under those face masks, everybody was mouth breathing. And so it dries the pee, the dries the plaque, makes it stickier, and we've got you know perio underneath there, and then we've got a, a acidic mouth, we've got tooth decay. So getting our patients to close their lips and clean their nose, use their nose, and nasal hygiene is probably even more important than oral hygiene. You know, using xylitol nasal spray, getting our our patients, teaching them how to clean and use their nose and use their nose all night. You know, the Wall Street Journal just published a paper tape article this week. And I was like, yes, yes, paper tape has made it to the, to the world. Yes. And, you know, it, you'll sleep deeper, you'll sleep better, you'll get more oxygen uptake. You know, and that's part of dementia is a lack of oxygen to the brain. Yes. So we need, we need to teach, teach that. I mean, that's the most important thing we do as hygienists is educate. Yes. You know, just looking in the mouth, is it dry? Is there decay? Is there perio? Perio and decay, they're mouth breathing, period. Yes. Yes. That's the bottom line. That's that's the first thing you can really affect a change in. 
is teaching your patients how to clear their nose and then how to use their nose yes. and to be aware of that. And I've had several patients recently, cause I've been much more focused on this. I'm instructing patients to do mouth taping. Um, I even have a patient, you know, I said, could I look in your nose? Because we had a conversation. This is a patient I've been seeing for since he was 10 years old. He is now 19. And when I did his oral cancer screening this last visit, his tonsils were huge and red and really irritated. And I said, does your throat hurt? And he said, yes, all the time. Every, you know, in the morning I wake up and I said, are you snoring? And he just had his first year at college. And he said, oh, my roommate says it's awful. Yes. And I said, do you feel like you breathe through your mouth? And he said, oh, I can't breathe through my nose. Like I physically cannot breathe through my nose. So we started talking a lot about this. And I said, I want you to go see an ENT here that I I really respect. He understands, you know, the correlations with sleep apnea and, you know, the the big picture. And so they did, they went to see him and it turns out that he has, I wouldn't even say a deviated septum. I would say it's an S curve septum Mm. and his turbinates on one side are deformed. So he is scheduled for reconstructive surgery in a few months. And I'm so excited for him on what's going to be coming his way for the rest of his life. But I've had so many patients. I had another patient. She had surgery for to to, um, kind of create more space and correct sleep apnea. And I said, did you ever do a follow-up sleep study to see if that was effective for you? And she said, no, I didn't. And I said, let's just start with some mouth taping and see what happens. And she emailed me the next day and she said, I had to rip that tape off within minutes last night. I can't breathe through my nose. And I said, okay, you got to go back to the drawing board, but you know, this, yeah. this didn't resolve it for you. And we were just at a, uh, a football game with my son last week. And just like you at the grocery store, I'm looking around and I said to my husband, I'm like, I keep wanting to go say something to parents. Like <laughs> you're, you, you need to take your yeah. child and have them evaluated because you can, mm-hmm. you can see it everywhere. Yeah. And, and especially if we catch it early, like yes. in the three to four year old, then, then they're going to have straight teeth and they're going to, ha- they're going to be healthier. They're going to be smarter. Our kids that mouth breathe, they, you can drop their IQ up to 15 points. Yes. Yes. So, you know, for parents, this is huge. Yes. And, and as you know, and I want you to speak to this, cause I know this is something that you've been really talking a lot about lately, but you know, oxygen is, is kind of the, the, the game, the game starter, but what leads next to, and what we really have to consider when we are mouth breathing and we're not nasal breathing is the nitric oxide aspect Mm -hmm. of it and how important that is. So talk to us about that. Okay. So nitric oxide opens up our blood vessel and it, and, and that's how we heal. So we cannot heal without nitric oxide and we make nitric oxide in our paranasal sinuses. So that's, that's number one. We have to nasal breathe. All our mouth breathers, they're making zero nitric oxide. So all those cute baby pictures of all those, you know, sleeping babies with their mouth open, their, their, their brain is affected because without that nitric oxide, they're not, they're not healthy. And our baby's brains grow at 1% a day for the first three months. So no nitric oxide, that little sweetheart is not growing their brain properly. And our patients, our perio patients, they cannot heal without nitric oxide. Now, what we also make nitric oxide with the food we eat. So leafy greens and beets and supplements. And so we eat that food, it goes through our digestive system, and then it comes, and I, I want to say it's nitrates, but it, there's a whole chemical reaction yes, there. Yes. And, and that comes out in our saliva. And that, what's in the saliva, mixes with the good bacteria on the back of our tongue. And that's how we also swallow and get more nitric oxide. So when we use uh, antibacterial mouthwash, we kill all of the bacteria. And, and there is our research studies out that talk about that, that, Antibacterial mouthwashes raise blood pressure. Yes. Because uh, it, the nitric oxide is, is not being made. Yes. So, you know, we're trying to do good, but yet now we're, we're, we're creating more problems. Right. And you, I'm, I'm to understand you do nitric oxide testing on your patients, correct? I do. I yes. do. I have nitric oxide test strips and for my perio patients, that's, and all my new patients. 
Yes. And I want to know what their, their nitric oxide level is. And yes. then I show them mine. Yes. Because I want to inspire them. Because when I first started learning about nitric oxide um, at the beginning of COVID, because we all did a gazillion CE courses there, and I, and I just fell off my chair when I, when I learned about nitric oxide. I was like, why didn't I know about this? And, and that's part of, you know, my biological world is looking beyond oral hygiene. It's what can I do to help my patients heal? And so testing myself, um, I was at the white end of the scale and now I'm at the hot pink end. And so I can show the patients, okay, this is where I want you to be. And it's diet, it's nasal breathing, and you can do this. And you can't heal your perio, your gum infection until we get this up. And it's an easy test. It's, you know, I, I do it right there when I take the pH of the patient. Yeah. So we do, we do the little spit on two little tabs and boom. And, and it's just so eye opening for the patient. Yes. The things that they can do immediately yeah. to help themselves heal. And we're going to get to this topic a little bit later, but I just, while we're talking about nitric oxide, I wanted to get your thoughts on you know, a lot of us now are starting to use some good oral probiotics to Absolutely. help patients have that good, healthy commissal bacteria in their mouths. But my understanding is if their nitric oxide is low, those probiotics aren't always going to do a whole lot for them. They've got to build that up to be able to really use those properly. That, that is correct. And we also need to heal the gut because otherwise we're putting those bacteria right into our gut and into our bloodstream. So it's, Probiotics, yes, but we've got to heal all the pieces. Yeah, for sure. So talk to me, you mentioned gut health. Let's talk about that because okay. we know studies are showing 70% of our immune system lies in our gut. We have all these patients that are sick that we are trying to help heal with all that we know to do. And, and, you know, I want to go back to, I'm going to hop back for one second to what you said. Okay. Um, I feel like my patients are looking at me in the, with the craziest faces now that I'm saying, you know, tell me what, what you're doing. I always ask every patient, tell me how you're taking care of your mouth at home, yeah. you know, and you know, what, are you using a mouth rinse? You know, are you flossing? Are you using a water pick? Tell me all the things. And then when they tell me they're using a mouthwash, I say, well, what, what are you using? You know, and it's typically Listerine or a crest. And I say, I know you're going to think I'm crazy because I'm a hygienist. Please stop using that. <laughs> When it says yeah. it kills 99.9% .9 of the bacteria, that's mm -hmm. true. And it's killing mm -hmm. off all the good that you need. Yeah. So, you know, that's a big conversation to have. Um, one other thing that I want to add is there's a lot of research showing that um, anti, uh, anti antacids are a yeah. big issue with decreasing nitric oxide production and having a good healthy gut. So talk to me a little bit about that. Well, yeah, by, by, we need that acidic environment in the gut. And with all of these, I mean, Prilosec OTC and all of those antacids, uh, they're like right up there in the top 10 of medications people are taking. Yes. yes. And, and so without that acidic environment, we can't digest our food, period. And then we're not getting the nutrients. And so maybe we're getting short-term healing, not, it's not, I'm not going to call it healing, but short-term relief, but long-term systemic issues, Yes, not absorbing and not having the adequate nutrition. So uh, yes, I, you know, that's where, you know, the medical community is, has fallen down yes. by, by relying on uh, drugs, pharmaceuticals, when we really need to get back to good nutrition. I mean, that's what, it, that's what it comes down to is really, you know, food that is food, right. food one item, you know, an apple or an orange, or, you know, instead of a box with chemicals in it and, and such an acidic, um, you know, nutrients that are just, or they're not nutrients. They're, 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 I call them Franken food actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. I love, I love the phrase. If it comes from a box, it will put you in a box. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. I love that. I'm going to borrow that. <laughs> um, so on the gut health front, mm -hmm. you know, let's just be honest. We both of us have been hygienists for a long time. It gets overwhelming to think mm -hmm. I'm going to see, and I know you've changed your paradigm. So this is why I love talking to you about this, okay. but 
for the, the average hygienist that's listening today, their mentality is I have an hour with this patient. Yeah. They're running late. I got to take x-rays. I have to go through their medical history. They're going to tell me all about their vacation. They don't want it. They just came for their cleaning. They, you know, they don't want to hear about all this. I, how do I even, where do I even start? How do I talk to them about gut health? Because that is so important to supporting everything else. Yeah. So where, how do you have that conversation with patients when you know they're, they've got, they're in dysbiosis? Well, I mean, I mean, that's a great question. And for years and years and years, I was on the hour, hour clock too. And the good thing that came out of COVID is we have 90 minutes of patient now. And because I'm in a little different clientele, these people already see their naturopath. They already have nutrients. Uh, they take more supplements than I do. And so they're already in engaged. So I have, I do have a leg up there because they, they, are, they have great diets. But it is, you know, for, for the average person, for the average hygienist, I mean, just even mentioning, you know, go see your primary care doctor and, and let's work together because tooth decay starts in the gut and gum disease starts in the gut. So, so let your doctor know that you have a gum infection, that your gums are bleeding, because if your gums are bleeding, your arteries are leaky, your gut is leaky, your brain is leaky. And then I, I tell my patients, go read the dental diet and, and then, and then open the door. You know, I mean, that's part of why I wrote my blog is because I didn't have enough time in my appointment to really give them all the information I wanted. Right. So, so that's where, you know, I would write down a blog post here, go read this, uh, you know, tooth decay article or, you know, why you get a lot of tartar. You know, yeah. tartar yep. is a lack of vitamin K2. Yes. And so, you know, here, read this article. And, and you know, people want information. Yes. I mean, I've had 100,000 people look at my blog. And, and I thought when I started, it's like, who's going to read a blog by a hygienist? Oh, my gosh. And the people really want information. Yes. So opening that door and just, saying, hey, you know, I see some nutritional deficiencies here. Uh, if you want to talk about it, I, I can give you more information. I have, you know, I, I write down books and I write down, you know, go look at my blog. On my blog, I have a list of books. And so that, so that you can give them what you need. Yeah, the tools you. they need. I've, I've been recommending to a lot of my patients lately, Breath, the book Breath by James Nestor. Yes, um, great. Yeah, yeah, to get them to start reading as well. But, and I think what I've come to is, you know, we hold this very unique, unique space as hygienists where our mm -hmm. patients do love and trust us. And it, it is a journey, you know, no one, you're not going to walk in one day and just fix everything for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that for myself, you know, as I'm, I honestly, I'm feeling like hygiene is shifting so much and we're under understanding so much more right now that I almost feel like I'm in a brand new career. Of, Isn't it uh, yes, yes, it is. Yeah. And, and, but it's also a little nerve wracking because it's like, I'm looking at some of these post tests after, you know, doing treatment on, on saliva. And I'm like, Ooh, I'm not doing what I thought I was doing. Mm -hmm. I got to rethink this. But then I'm also coming to the reality that there is so much more happening systemically that I can't control. Mm -hmm. And that is an open door for the conversation with the patient of, Hey, we've done the right steps that we knew to take and you're not responding. There's something else going on. Exactly. Let's start working with your doctor. So, you know, for those of you listeners that are like, Oh, this is overwhelming. If you'll hang in there and you'll just stay with the patient. And I always say to a patient in the beginning, when you can tell they're overwhelmed by the diagnosis and everything that we're mm -hmm. talking about, you know, don't get overwhelmed. I'm going to walk through this every step with you. I'm not going to leave you hanging. We're going to get exactly. to the bottom of this. And so it may be four appointments in that they're now saying, okay, maybe I will go see my doctor. And, and that's a win. You know, it doesn't happen the same for everyone. So that is correct. I, mean, I, I tell my patients I'm their coach. Yes. And we will start at the bottom and then we'll just keep going until up, up that totem pole until we get the right solutions to their yes. problem. Yes. It's not just a better toothbrush and more toothpaste. 
Yes. It is, it is systemic. It is breathing. It is maybe they're having a reaction to the metal that's in their mouth and they're allergic to it. Maybe they are um, mouth breathing all night long. So, so we have to sleuth it out. And I give them, you know, one or two nuggets. And, and I see my patients every three months. Yes. And that way, you know, I can keep a closer eye on them. I can see if things are better. If, if their product isn't working, let's change it. Yes. And I also give my patients permission to email me and say, yes. hey, you've got a problem. I want to know. I need to know what's working, what's not. Yes. If you love something, great. If you hate something, you got to let me know. Yeah. Yeah, so for sure. It is, it is a journey and we're, we're healers. We're not just mechanical toothbrushes. We have so much more to offer people. Yes. And, and, and learning it is, it can be overwhelming, but it is, it makes hygiene so much more fun. Yeah. And I love being a hygienist and I have been a hygienist for 43 years and I still love it. And I still learn every day. It's like, I just, why didn't I know that? Where did that come from? Let me go read that research paper. Yes. You know, like just, just the other day, I read something, a paper from 2016 that talked about spirochetes creating a biofilm in the brain, which I knew about. But what really hit me was the line in there. And, and I also knew about bacteremias. Okay. But putting the two together was like, oh, was, oh my gosh, we are, we, I, I thought the blood brain barrier was a little sturdier than it is. But that paper really said that the spirochetes are introduced into the brain because of dental procedures. Yes. Yes. Like, it makes my skin crawl. Yeah. Yes. So could we be as a profession actually creating dementia? Yes. And that, that um, we're going to change the way we do our hygiene appointments to really do disinfection first before yes. we get in there to scale. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. You've got to know what you're dealing with. So if you've got spirochetes, amoebas, porphyromonas gingivalis, all of those things in the bloodstream, you are introducing them to other body parts and going across the blood brain barrier and, and viruses. Yes. Know, so that's where salivary diagnostics is really important because they are finding herpes simplex viruses in the brain. And we know that viruses plus periopathogens and tooth decay pathogens make that disease exponentially more aggressive. Yes. And I would argue to add on to the fire, let's just do it. Um, okay. your, your candida as well. That's a yeah. whole nother ball game. Yeah. 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 Exactly. When you think about what we're up against, it is, it's so alienistic you know, how much we contain in and on us. And it is, it's an all out war. I, you know, I did a, um, a, a podcast with Dr. Neighbors called the invisible oh, war and that's yeah. what it is. It's this. Yeah. So it that's is. where I love salivary testing. That's where I love microscopy to be able to actually see what we're up against. And I think there's yeah. so much value in that for patient education, because when they can see it with their own eyes, that's, that's when they're like, thing. okay, what are we going to do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, you buy into it. Yes. And you don't, it's not even a, a hard sell. Yes. It is, you know, you show them what's in there. If it's teeming with spirochetes or their kiddos are teeming with spirochetes, that's their first question is how do we get rid of this? Yes. You know, because I've also got the research right there next to the microscope showing, you know, dementia and heart attacks and stroke and rheumatoid arthritis and low birth weight, stillbirth all of those things. So, you know, if they've got any question, there's the research right there. Yeah. And then my schedule is so packed until November, we're bringing another hygienist on because, you know, people want to be healthy. Yes. And the microscope, it should be part of our armamentarium. That should be chair side for every single hygienist. I just, I, it breaks my heart that we don't use that as effectively. Right. Yeah. So I want to hop back to gut health here. So, okay. um, obviously, you know, nutrition diet is a big part of that. And, uh, and I know you and I both know this, but I wanted to talk a little bit about how big of a role fiber plays 
in gut health. And people don't realize that because people just think, oh, I'll just take a probiotic and, you know, that'll, you know, it, the, yeah. the same mentality we have with just systemic health. It's all just take a pill. I'll take, you know, but talk, let's talk a little bit about what you know about fiber when, when it comes to gut health. Yeah. Well, fiber. Yeah. We don't eat enough fiber. We get between, I think, eight and 12 grams of fiber a day. And we should have, for women, we should have like 25 grams of fiber. And I think men is 35 grams yes. of fiber. Yes. And so fiber is, is really important. It is part of what we, what we do to heal. Yeah. It's what feeds our, our good, healthy gut bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they yeah. feed on. So if they're yeah. not getting that, they, they die off and then the, you know, the bad stuff takes over. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, it, it just, it comes back to, it comes back to oxygen. It comes back to nutrition and then gut health is yeah. the result. So when you see a patient and, you know, obviously, like you said, you have this beautiful relationship with physicians as well, and you're, you're co-treating patients. How are you guys addressing gut health and, and, you know, gut dysbiosis? Are you, do you recommend probiotics to your patients? I, I'll recommend oral probiotics. Okay. You know, I, I, the pro, pro Gia, um, or, you know, I mean, I actually kind of let the primary care doctors, our, our naturopath kind of guide that. Okay. And, you know, I, I just tell the patient, go see your doctor. Okay. Let's find out if you're sensitive to foods. Let's find out if you have leaky gut and then heal that. Uh, one of the things that they can do to heal it is bone broth. Yes. You know, just, just something simple is bone broth, but then also get rid of sugar, get rid of you know, processed foods. I walk into the grocery store now. It's like, Hmm, what can I eat? Right. Um, I can eat the periphery Yep. and, and I stay away from anything in a box. Yep. And I stay away from anything that I can't pronounce. Right. So I'm reading labels. So I got to get my reading glasses out when I'm in the grocery store. Um, but just having a, a healthier diet has made all the difference. Yes. Um, you know, one of the things that you know, I listened to Dr. Uchi Odiatu. Mm -hmm. Yes. He's been on several uh, times with us as well. Oh my gosh. He's wonderful. And one of the things he said that changed my life was an avocado a day yes. will change your life. Yes. And so just getting that fiber from one avocado, you're at 10 grams of fiber for your day already. Yep. Boom. Yep. And, and, and I know there's some research coming out too, that's talking about sunlight for GI health. Yes. Yes. We need vitamin D. We need vitamin D. We cannot heal without vitamin D. So, and, and D, D3 also needs K2 and it needs magnesium and it needs vitamin A. So just a good overall diet. Yes. Exactly. Do you, do you ever recommend supplementation on top of diet or do you again, leave that more to the functional medicine doctor? Um, I mean, for the most part, I leave it to the functional medicine doctor, but I do have in the office, um, D3 K2, uh, liposomal supplement okay. so that they can leave with that today. I don't yes. see a problem with, if they've got decay, if they've got perio, I want them to start taking it right away. Got it. So, but you know, I want them to go also and just see how much they need. Yeah. Yeah. You know, are they absorbing it? And do they have the gene that keeps them from absorbing it? So that's where the doctor really, we need to, we need to have a team. We can't work in a silo. Yeah. So, so I, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, cause this is something that I think we don't think about very much, but it plays so much into all of this is chewing our food. <laughs> okay. So this is now my myofunctional therapy hat on. So, you know, we, we don't teach our patients how to use their teeth and we need to chew our food until it is soupy. And until I became a myofunctional therapist, I didn't know I was chewing incorrectly. I was circle chewing. I'd chew on one side and then I'd move it to the other side and then I'd move it back to the other side. What we need to do is number one, take smaller bites and then put it in our mouth, break it in two and chew it evenly on both sides and chew at least 20, 30, 40 times so that we are, we're the first stage of digestion. 
So if we're only chewing six times, then we're chunking our food down. We are, we're making our gut work extra hard. We're not getting our nutrients and we're, we're causing constipation. We're causing diarrhea. We're not absorbing our food and nutrients. So, so our patients that only have teeth on one side, you know, they're not using their muscles properly and then they're causing jaw joint issues. And so chewing, excellent, excellent question. Yeah, we don't, I, I, like, I don't think most of us think about that contributing to nutrition, but I, yeah, that's such a huge part of it. It is. So we talked about fat soluble vitamins for preventing decay. Is that really the, the only thing we need to know on that front? Um, pumping our salivary glands. Okay. Again, you know, that's part of chewing and getting our, getting our own mouth and the nutrients and the, the minerals in our, in our salivary gland to remineralize our teeth. That's, that is, you know, so if, if our patients have two or more medications, then we know that the quality and quantity of their saliva is compromised. And so getting them to chew, um, you know, I, one of the things I use for that is the Myo Munchie. It is a silicone mouthpiece and they put it in their mouth and they just gently chew it. So we're pumping that parotid gland. So we're getting those nutrients for tooth decay and getting, you know, I mean, that's the perfect remineralization agent you know, putting extra minerals on. Okay. That's great. But they're in there for what? 10 minutes. You know, whereas our saliva is there 24 seven. Yes. So teaching our patients again, how to, to, you know, keep their lips together, chew and pump the parotid gland. Awesome. Talk to me about, because I know you said you not only test for nitric oxide, but you test pH of the mouth. So talk to me about what you do when you see that the pH is off. All right. If they have an acidic mouth, you know, most of the people have a pH of between 5.5 and 6.25. I want the pH between 6.8 and 7.2. That's where it needs to be when they wake up in the morning, in the middle of the day, you know, any, any, I want it there. I want it sitting there. When the pH goes below 5.5, then we have demineralization and we're not getting the benefits of the saliva. So, so I have my patients test first thing in the morning before they get out of bed. I kind of have, I tell them, take a little pH diary for a day or two. And let's just see what, what you do throughout the day. You know, before you eat breakfast, after you eat breakfast, before you have your coffee, after you have your coffee or your latte. And, and then let's just keep that in mind as we work to remineralize you. Um, and if they have an acidic mouth, I tell them, okay, no Listerine, no acidic mouthwashes, because that just drops the pH for another hour. It takes it, it, even if you, you know, you drop the pH and then you keep your lips together, it still takes an hour to get the pH back up to 6.8, 7.2. Yes. So stop all of those acidic things. If you're going to do something acidic, you know, in the bathroom, have a bottle of baking soda water. Yes. Yes. And just give it a shake. Every time you wash your hands, give a swoosh. Let's pop that pH up. It's an easy fix. I also like basic bites so that before they go to bed, they take a basic bite and they chew it, let it melt in their mouth and then go to sleep. And it's tasty. It's, it's, it's delicious. It raises the pH, remineralizes the teeth and the xylitol changes that microbiome. So, you know, products and, you know, mouthwashes that have a neutral pH, great, but nothing, you know, they should know the pH of every product you recommend your patients. Yes. Yes. And there's, there's, you can pull that up. There's sheets of, of, you know, kind of the pH. So that's super interesting. And I'm going to, I'm going to just give you a little plug here. You know, I've already said, go check Barbara out on queenofdentalhygiene.net, but She does have all of her products listed of what she recommends, all the books she recommends, all the different products. So if you're looking for something, if you're hearing this and you're like, Ooh, that, that, that sounds curious. I want to do that. Then go check her blog out because she's, you've got a fabulous website of all the things. So thank you. yes, for sure. Um, 
Let's talk about some great diet choices that we can recommend to our patients because, you know, patients, again, like I said, this is kind of a touchy subject. People get, people are emotionally attached to their foods. Um, For a lot of them, that is their happy place. Um, And so when you start kind of talking about that, it can get a little uncomfortable and dicey. Um, What are some food things that we can recommend that patients almost feel like, Ooh, I can have that. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. What do you what do you um, say on that front? So my my favorite thing to recommend is chocolate. Yes, a little bit of dark chocolate actually prevents tooth decay. So I just did a blog post on that. Um, you know, eat chocolate, prevent cavities. Hurrah! How, yes. can, we, how can we beat that? Yes. Um, you know, good healthy water. Getting a water filter for the sink. So that you're getting those chemicals out, that's a, a good investment. Um, you know, foods that are foods, just just a you know one one ingredient foods, excellent. The thing with sugar, you know, I, it it took me about a week. I mean, I was I didn't realize I was addicted to sugar until I listened to Dr. Uchi and it's like oh, but having that avocado satiated me. And I didn't crave sugar after that. So when we feed the good bacteria, then they don't get hungry for sugar. It's the bad bacteria that are saying, hey, you know, send down that Snickers bar, send down sugar, send down, you know, food that 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 comfort food. And so it's the bacteria talking to the brain and you think that you have a sweet tooth when what you're really doing is feeding the bad bacteria. Right. They're, they have taken over. They are the third brain. Yes. So it's, you know, looking at it differently. Once you, once you kick that sugar habit and you get rid of the bad bacteria, um, it's a game changer. It yes. really, it is. I, I look at sugar and I think, oh my gosh, it's a poison. It is. It's toxin for sure. It's just, it's just driving inflammation throughout our entire body. Exactly. And, and how can we win as hygienists unless we address the whole body and that systemic link and that inflammation, you know, again, we're otherwise we're just playing whack-a-hole dentistry. Yes. That's that's what I call it. Yes. Um, I don't know if you recommend this, but I've talked to patients about making a shift over, you know, because one of the big questions I ask obviously is, I I do ask about nutrition. What are you eating? What are you drinking? Mm -hmm. What are you drinking is a very important question these days, because there's a lot of chemicals and sugar and acids going in, you know, through the liquids is, um, I am a big proponent of green tea. Okay. Um, I don't put anything in it. Sometimes I might put a little xylitol, but mainly green tea. I've, I understand there's a lot of research showing that those tannins are very good for us as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I think I, that's one of, that's one of the reasons chocolate is such a good thing as well, is it contains those tannins also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then there's, there is a uh, pretty substantial research showing that uh, cheese actually can play into de- de- decay prevention. And I, you know, you mentioned earlier fats, we need fats. Yeah. So cheese contains the fat, but it also contains a lot of the good, healthy bacteria. So that's something yeah. to consider as well. Exactly. So yeah, you 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 you've got you know nutrition. This is great. Uh, <laughs> There's just so much to know. I you know in my next life I want to be a functional nutritionist as well. I mean I that would be the perfect mix. I mean I I wish I were 30 years younger because you know now that I know I mean it's taken me 40 plus years to get here. It's like oh I need that information. Yes. You know, the, what we learned in hygiene school was the tip of the iceberg. And, right. and I was in the dark ages. You know, we didn't, it was just sugar. Stop eating sugar. Yes. Yes. Well, but, you know, it, because people are addicted to it, it's like, how do you tell them to stop eating sugar? Yes. And that's where, you know, that avocado was, a, it was a light bulb moment went off for me. It's like, oh, now I don't crave sugar. And if I'm hungry, I'll eat an avocado with a little salt. And it's like, yes, that, that satiates me. And that calms that sugar craving and eliminates it. Yes. Yes. 
Well, you know what you just said, I hope the listeners heard what you just said. This has been a a 40 year journey for you. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen overnight. You didn't walk out of hygiene school and know it all. And we're able to say, oh, good, we're there. And the way that our world is changing and growing and technology is happening and the research is happening, we, we will never arrive. And again, I think, you know, there's part of me that's like, oh, that's discouraging because I'm never going to have all the things, but it's also exciting because it means I'm never going to get bored. There's always something new to learn and grow toward. So I just want to point out, you know, Barbara's story is so amazing and she's come so far and she knows so much and she's making such an impact, not only on her patients, but in the, in the dental world, really. Um, and, you know, I've, I've had many other guests on the show, you know, Dr. Uche is one of them, um, Dr. Whit Wilkerson, you know, Dr. Tom yeah. Neighbors. I've had a lot of people that are, we are all of that like mind of it's a process and it's a growth. So for our listeners listening today, I really want you to hear that, that, you know, you may take a, a nugget away today and that's, that's great because that's the next step. So don't feel, you know, I think what happens is we get overwhelmed and then we get paralyzed and we hear all the things and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't do all that. Okay. I'm going to do nothing, but take what you hear today, even if it's just a small nugget and start there. And then once you've, once you feel good about that, take the next bite. And, you know, it's, it's the, how do you eat the elephant one bite at a time is, you know, and then I think community is such a huge part of it because we learn so much from each other and we hear analogies that people use and different, like you said, you know, I want to go back now. I want to start nitric oxide testing, like, and, and pH testing. Why not? That's so easy and inexpensive and such a great way to help educate patients and really get to the root of things. So I just think I wanted to point that out because I just think, you know, for the listeners that are like, oh, this is so much. No, just start with what makes sense to you and then take that forward. Exactly, exactly. You know, and, and incorporate a piece at a time until you get comfortable with it. Keep learning. There's so many great books out there. And you know, just start in one and work your way through. And, and then you know, incorporate salivary diagnostics. That's probably the key thing. You know, yes. know what you're dealing with. And, and it doesn't cost us anything. And it gives us, it, it, it makes us medical people because that's yes. what we are. Yes. And, and so having those test results, looking to see what we're dealing with and it brings it home to the patient too. Yes. And it also allows us to really customize care, which I think in the era we're in right now, patients really appreciate that. Yes. They, yeah. they get it. They understand. Yeah. And they want something more. They're searching. Yes. So, So as we wrap up, I want to just make sure that we touched all our bases. Is there anything we left out? Is there anything else you want to share? Um, Gosh, Um, you know, talking with, asking our patients about how well they're sleeping, because that's, that's uh, airway is key and asking them, you know, how, how checking in with them and how they're doing and saying, okay, you know, bring your toothbrush in with you. Let's work on your toothbrushing, just getting the plaque off, using disclosing solution on every patient. I use an air polisher, the guided biofilm therapy, if, if that's a game changer. And then ozone, you know, because that penetrates the, the biofilm and kills the bacteria so that I'm not introducing that into the blood system. I know not every office has that, but you can get ozone oil. And putting ozone oil on your instrument as you're scaling, you're disinfecting. So you're reducing that bacteremia. So just some some nuggets there to consider. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So I've obviously I've mentioned your your blog, Queen of Dental Hygiene. Go check it out. Uh, But where else can we find you? Well, I will be speaking at um, the Missouri Dental Hygiene Association's meeting in October. Awesome. Um, on myofunctional disorders. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to also speak at uh, uh, King's, uh, King County Component in um, November. So I'm, I'm starting to get my speaking uh, schedule going. So I'll put it on my blog. And I do have some YouTube videos I've done. So if people want a little more information, um, I, I spoke with Dr. Nafisa Sendari and also Bridget Danner. So I've got those uh, up on YouTube. 
so they can get get more and they're welcome you all are welcome to email me if you have questions i am happy to to share my information with you awesome well and i will um i will add your email to the link for the, when this podcast mm -hmm. goes up so you can find her information there but barbara i really really appreciate your time not just today but the investment you've made over the years and the passion you have for this and the fact that even when it gets overwhelming you don't just sit down and quit trying you just say okay let's figure this out well um, yeah oh my yeah. gosh i, feel I like want to you're... prevent dementia yes that right? is so important yes oh my gosh well that thank is. you for being a pioneer in our profession thank you for being a personal mentor to me uh, it's my honor yes and on that note i just want to remind you listeners if you have not yet come to join our mighty network that is the place where we can all learn and grow and collaborate together so you may have some questions today after this come join the Mighty Network and ask them. I'm going to be honest, I might not know the answer, but someone in the community might. And that's the whole point of this is we've got to do this together. So it is a free app you download, search Bulletproof Hygiene and come join and let's chat. But Barbara, thank you so much mm -hmm. again. And I hope we're going to see you in the near future. Well, thank you. I hope so too. I'm, I want to get the word out. So yes. thank you for this opportunity. Absolutely. Bye-bye everybody. Have a great week.